Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto. We're going to talk about the Sony a7 III and how it's held up over the last two years. Now, the camera was announced in February two years ago, and it became available shortly thereafter. And I bought the thing right away because the specs looked great and everything just looked great. I loved the new battery. I had been shooting with the Sony a7R III, and so I knew that the Sony a7 III was gonna be fantastic. Uh, it shoots great video, it shoots great photos. There are so many good things about this camera. Its price for performance is just unmatched in the industry, and there's more to offer in this camera typically than the competition, even though it has some things that people may prefer uh, over others, and it misses some things that people may prefer that other cameras have. It's still an absolutely fantastic camera. It's arguably the best camera in its class. Of course, for now, things always change, and different manufacturers are always coming out with different things. So at the point that I'm talking about this camera, having all the experience that I've had over the last couple of years with Nikon mirrorless and, and Canon mirrorless and stuff, this camera has just really been my go-to all the time. I'm not holding it right now because I'm filming with it. I often get comments in uh, most of my videos with people asking me what I use to shoot the video. They're impressed by the sharpness of the video, uh, by everything in the video, and my setup is so simple. It is way simpler than most YouTubers that talk about cameras. I have my Sony a7 III set up on a tripod with a little monitor so that I can see what I'm looking at, and I'm utilizing window light that's coming in through. I have no other lights in and around here at all, nothing outside of the scene that you can't see, just windows and camera, and that's it and I'm able to produce amazing videos that look good and people comment on them. So I'm impressed and I continue to use this camera because it's just really easy for me to produce my content using it. So I'm gonna talk about what I like about this camera, I'll talk about what I don't like, and then we'll just round that up at the end. So let's start out with what I like. Now I love the low light performance of the Sony platform in general especially the a7 III. I switched to Sony about six years ago, maybe a little bit more than six years now, because when the a7S came out, I was chasing low light performance. That's what I needed most. I was shooting a lot of weddings. I was in places that didn't have a whole lot of lighting. And so I needed the best that was able to be offered as far as low light. I didn't want to be chasing lighting sources all the time, setting up lights and figuring out things. And I just didn't have time because I was shooting weddings and shooting events where I didn't always have control over those circumstances. So I needed to utilize what was available as far as light goes and make the best use of that. And so I needed my camera to work a little harder for me. And so the low light performance of the Sony a7 III is absolutely great. It's not as good, of course, as like a Sony a7S II or whatever is available now or whatever Sony hopefully will come out with soon, but it is amazing and so much better in low light situations than the competitors that are in its price point range. So the low light performance has kept this camera still two years later on the forefront as an option for most people when they need low light performance. The autofocus is absolutely fantastic on this camera. Of course, Sony has been kind of a leader in the whole eye autofocus, you know, where the camera is choosing which eye to focus on and whatnot. I don't utilize that feature because though it's great and it's really cool, it is not perfect and it's definitely not smart enough to always be right. And when I'm shooting I, in situations like this, it's okay if the camera might miss focus and then I can go back and shoot again. But when I'm with shooting weddings, when I'm shooting events, they're all situations that I can't do over again. I can't go up on stage and say, hey, uh, uh, speaker, can you do that part again and, and do it in that way so that I can get the cool shot that I just missed? I can't rely on eye autofocus and stuff like that. So I utilize the focus points, the single point focus and the different sizes that are available uh, to make sure that I'm achieving focus where I want focus to be achieved. But that autofocus system never gets it wrong. When I tell the camera where to put autofocus, 
the camera puts it there and it doesn't mess around. It doesn't make a mistake. The only time that I miss autofocus is if I accidentally get that point off of my intended sub subject or location. So it's user error at that point. So the camera's autofocus itself is just absolutely great. And the autofocus in low light is just far superior. In lower light situations, cameras struggle to be able to achieve autofocus. And the Sony a7 III just absolutely blows the doors off when it comes to that uh, ability to focus in low light. I have access to other cameras. I have cameras that I use that are from other manufacturers uh, along with my Sony a7 III. And the Sony a7 III just seems to be better in lower light situations at achieving autofocus. The 4K video quality out of the camera is great. I shoot a lot of 4K video. All the videos that you watch that I produce on this channel, on State of Tech, on my personal YouTube channel, they're all shot with the Sony a7 III, and they're also all in 4K, and the video just looks amazing considering the simple setup that I use. So I, I always shoot my 4K video with this camera, even though I have other cameras. Sometimes I utilize the other cameras, but 95 or more percent of the video that I shoot is with this camera or maybe my Sony a6600. It also produces fantastic images when I'm shooting photos. I know that with my camera, I'm gonna get amazing images with the glass that I have, and I can just go out and shoot with my Sony a7 III and not have to worry so much about different situations that might be a little bit harder to manage in camera with other cameras. And part of that comes to down to the fact that I've gotten really used to the controls on the camera. It's easy to get around the camera and get the camera to do what I need to do. Of course, I'm shooting in manual mode. I'm taking advantage of as much as I can uh, to manually control the camera aside from autofocus so that I can get the shots that I want. And the layout and everything, though there are some good layouts, the, the Nikon Z6, I absolutely love the layout and the ergonomics of that camera. The Sony a7 III, I'm just faster at using. And so I'm able to get great images because I'm taking control of the camera and the camera itself is able to capture fantastic images when I'm giving it the correct settings. It also has IBIS, that internal body stabilization that gives me nice stable handheld shots. These days I'm hybrid shooting, I'm shooting photos and video, so I don't always have the ability to have like a tripod and I don't wanna be locked into a camera gimbal. So I'm handheld shooting a lot and having that internal body stabilization definitely makes my shots look great. It gives me the ability to be able to shoot handheld and not have to rely on having a camera specific for video and a camera specific for photo, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It's nice to have one camera that can just do it all and does it all well. It also has dual card slots, which the other cameras in and around its price points do not. For those that find dual card slots to be important, this camera has it. Although it doesn't have two fast card slots, you can set one card slot for your photos, you can set one card slot for your video, you can have it right to both card slots, and so you have that backup right in camera. And so dual card slots is definitely something that I like, though it's not something that I am that uh, crazy about as some other people are. Uh, you also can't beat the price on this camera. It's absolutely great. Uh, other cameras you're gonna spend double the amount on and it's still gonna barely achieve more than a Sony a7 III. So I would prefer to have a Sony a7 III or maybe even have two of them or have the Sony a7 III and a couple of lenses or some better lenses over spending more on a camera body. There are more expensive camera bodies out there, but the Sony a7 III delivers so well in a multitude of ways that works for hybrid shooters like me and also is great for people who just shoot video or just shoot photo. So there are a few things that I don't like about the camera, but the list is rather small. I definitely have gotten used to having more articulation in the screen on the back of the camera, being that I have a couple of Sony a6400s and a Sony a6600. I love being able to flip the screen all the way up and be able to see my shot for those situations where I don't wanna to have to utilize an external monitor. That's not necessarily a deal breaker, but having the flip out screen would be nice. 
Also, the buttons are a little flat and sometimes hard to get to. Of course, Sony has listened to customer feedback and on the Sony a7R 4 and on the Sony A9 II, the buttons are more pronounced. And I guarantee when they release the Sony a7 IV, the buttons will be a little bit more pronounced as well. But I do wish that there was a little bit more there to the buttons because sometimes, especially when I'm shooting and it's a little bit colder out, it's harder to feel those buttons and kind of orient myself on the camera. It's not bad. It's not impossible. I just wish that there was a little bit more to the buttons. I also don't like the fact that when you switch between photo and video mode, it doesn't remember the settings that you were using specific to those modes. The Nikon Z6 does this by when you toggle between photo and video mode. If you're shooting at 1 1 60th of a second at f2.8 and ISO 400 in photo, and then you're shooting at 1 60th at like an f4 and ISO 200 in video, when you switch between, it keeps those settings, but on Sony, it doesn't. When I go into video, I have to change to my video settings. When I go back into photo, I have to change back to the photo settings. And there are custom user presets and stuff that you can use on the camera, but then there are other things that you have to do in order to get between them besides just switching into that photo or that video mode. So it is a little frustrating. I do wish that it was easier to get in between photo and video modes than turning the knob, all the, the mode knob, all the way around to get to video mode. I wish that Sony would just add a simple toggle like other cameras have. So who is this camera for? Well, I think it's definitely for somebody who wants a full frame camera that has a lot of available features. The APS-C cameras, the crop sensor cameras are getting amazing. The Sony a6600 is absolutely fantastic and I shoot a lot with that camera now because it's so small and easy to pack around with me. But my Sony a7 III is still a go-to because it is a full frame camera, which means it's gonna be better and low light situations and there's just something that can't be replaced with smaller cameras and that image quality that you're getting out of a full frame image. The full frame cameras just in combination with the lenses uh, are going to produce just a fantastic looking image. Not that an APS-C camera can't because I get beautiful images out of my crop sensor cameras but I just, I, I still really just like to have that full frame image. There's just something about it that pulls at me differently than when I'm looking at an image from another camera. So full frame, definitely great. But this camera is not necessarily for everyone. If you shoot photos and need higher resolution photos, you may wanna go with a camera that shoots at higher resolution. The over 24 megapixels that this camera captures is definitely good enough, but if you want the bigger images, you're gonna to need to go with something that shoots a little bit bigger of an image. Uh, if you shoot predominantly video this camera is great but there's also the a7s line of cameras and that's hopefully going to be refreshed soon but that camera is definitely better at video shooting and in lower light situations than the a7 III so you might consider going with one of those other cameras depending on what it is that you shoot more often but the a7 III can't be beat for hybrid shooters who are shooting both photo and video and even if you shoot only one of those it's still a camera that really can't be beat in what it's capable at doing. So you're not going to go wrong either way, and the price is absolutely fantastic for what you're getting. Focus on getting a camera like this instead of spending a bunch more money because I think it's more about the lenses that you're connecting to the camera than it is the cameras. All the cameras that are out right now have great sensors and can capture great images. Just make sure that you're putting decent glass on your camera. So if you have any questions about this camera, definitely let me know in the comment section below. There are links to the camera as well as my setup down in the description for you to check out. So click on those links. When you do, it helps support the channel here. Any questions that you have, I'd love to answer them to the best of my ability in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel here, please do as I have more content coming out all the time and I want you to come along and be part of it with me. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.